Hello, I'm Dr. Matt Harris, and I'm going to talk a little bit more today about the tenets of educational technology leadership. Specifically, I'm going to focus on leadership. Now, it seems a little strange to be talking about leadership as being a part of educational technology leadership, but we have to delve deeper into it to, to have a better understanding about how leadership principles or, or leadership topics have a direct connection to educational technology in schools. Now, before we get into that, let's just talk about leadership as a whole. Um, Leadership is this kind of undefinable term. Like as a teacher, you know, what is good teaching? If you walk into a room, you'd be able to identify it, you'd be able to see it, um, and you know it was there. You might be able to pick out little elements that are, um, that kind of pop out in a discussion. You'd be able to, to see those pieces, but, but true measures of good leadership or of good teaching are, are hard to find. And that's the same thing with leadership. We, we know who our good leaders are. We, we recognize them when we see them. But there are certain tangibles and intangibles that, that are very difficult to qualify or even quantify when talking about what leadership is. However, in the educational technology sense, since educational technology hits every aspect of the school, leadership is an incredibly key component if you are in that kind of senior position working with an entire district or, or on a state level or, or even just in, in your own site running a team. You have to have an understanding of how to be a leader. And I'm using the word leadership because I want to differentiate that from manager. So you need to be a senior leader as well as a senior manager. But the manager piece, that's a, that's a different video that we'll talk about a little bit later. As an educational technology leader, you need to be a leader on your campus within your district. And first and foremost, that means that you need to have a presence. You need to walk around and have have people view you or have an exuding personality that says that I, I am a leader, I am someone to be trusted, um, I'm a person that you can come up to and ask questions for, I, I will be able to help people, um, and I know that I have some faults, but I'm here with under the guise that I'm looking to improve things um, for the school, I'm looking to improve our use of technology for learning, and I have a way I want to do that, and I have a way that I want to work with everybody else. So that presence of being someone that's trusted, that's somebody that can be followed, that's important. Um, it may be hard for some people to do that. A lot of folks that um, have worked in the technology field have, could probably identify people that don't have that presence right off. But it's something that you can develop. It's something that you can build out of a set of confidence, um, out of a set of interactions, of working on connecting with people. It really is this kind of relational piece where the ability to walk in and talk to a group of people or to talk to an individual person, being able to listen to them and having the confidence, having the understanding of what they're really asking for, it's, it's a key element that, that builds over time. And just as, um, just as muscles atrophy, same with this kind of leadership presence confidence thing. If you're not building it regularly, it's, it's something that you're going to run into some problems on. But it is an absolute key element that as you're building your programs and you have this, this systemic thinking and systemic knowledge that we're going to talk about in another video, that you have a presence that kind of tells people that you understand that there's complexity here, you understand there's interconnectivity, people have needs, and you're accounting for all of them. And with that, with that presence, um, in order to be a good leader, you have to show a level of communication. You have to have a standard of communication for which you're connecting with people. Um, be it through regular emails, be it through your face-to-face -face communications, your public speaking abilities, the way that you articulate yourself, the ability to communicate what you're looking to do, your understanding of other people's needs and desires, your interrelational skills of connecting other people is absolutely vital within this leadership strand because you are in a position in an ed tech senior leadership um, role where you're connecting everybody. You're going to be connecting students and parents and teachers and administrators, operational staff, um, financial staff, outside vendors, um, people coming in to evaluate your school. Those are all coming through you. You're going to have to find a way to be able to communicate with them, articulate with them um, in such a way that you understand the media in which you're, the medium which in you're, you're communicating with them but also how to tailor your message so that you're, you're taking things in and you're, you're putting people together. Now, it's interesting because as I say this, you're kind of, you might be asking yourself, do I need to be an extrovert to be an ed tech leader? And I, I don't think that's what I'm saying. No, absolutely not. I'm, I'm not an extrovert myself. I'm, you, know, you do your Myers-Briggs and I come up as introvert just about every time. Um, 
But what I have done is I've taken the time to, to learn how I want my communication to come across, how I want my messaging to come across, how I want to interact with individual people in meetings. Um, and there's things that you can do with that. There are books that you can read around communication styles, how to run a meeting, public speaking skills, watch TED Talks. Um, join clubs where you like Toastmasters, where you're going to be practicing your, your broader audience discussions and, and communications. Um, but find the things that are most important to you and how you want to highlight them, how you want to make an argument. That's absolutely vital within an ed tech field because you're moving so fast and you're making so many changes that you absolutely have to be able to co um, communicate what you're looking to do. And kind of in line with that, with having a presence and having communication and showing a level of confidence, you have to have a confidence in something. And that something is kind of a vision for the way that you want your school or your organization to run, <clears throat> operate, address challenges. Um, what does the school look like in a few years? What, what are you hoping to accomplish in the short term? Um, what is your ideal situation? And having an ability to articulate that is vital. So you got to spend some time internally thinking, what, what do I want? my department, what I want my team to be able to do. And then what I suggest is that you take a three-tiered approach. So create three different statements um, that all kind of talk about what your vision is for educational technology within the school, within the broader context, the value of technology for learning, um, why we're looking to create integrated systems, your understandings of the overall organization, whatever that vision is that you're going to be using as a basis for your communications and your, your leadership presence, um, have some statements around that that you can, you can deliver in various contexts. And so what I have been taught that have been very valuable for me is have a 20 second, a two minute, and a 10 minute description of these things. So have, have some depth on each one of them and understand how to talk about them, whether it be in a cocktail party with what's called an elevator pitch, a 20 second description of what technology is gonna be at your school, um, a two minute pitch, something where you're <clears throat> meeting somebody for the first time, um, you're, you're gonna have an interview, you're, gonna, you're trying to, to solicit some information from somebody else or, or make a connection that two minute, or a, a deeper presentation, a five to 10 minute presentation where you really wanna sell a board member or teacher on why you're using technology for learning. Um, and they're all very valuable because they make you think about what you're trying to do and what you're doing from a leadership perspective within different frames. And when you're able to articulate those things, then your presence grows, then your ability to communicate grows, which are vital because ed tech is so unique within a school. I mean, look at the academic, the academic pieces. We know they're based on learning. We know they're connected to student activities. There's gonna be levels of assessment. There are gonna be curricula that you're gonna to tie to. And, and even if you maybe come into a new situation where you don't know the curriculum or you know, you're kind of new to the content, you understand the system. EdTech is relatively new. I mean, it's been around for decades, but it evolves so fast that, ed, that educational technology is something that has to be explained on a regular basis. It's something that has to be rationalized on a regular basis. And so for you to have a clear vision and an ability to articulate that puts you in a very strong leadership role. One of the things that I also have found within leadership beyond this, this communication style and the presence of, of being a leader and knowing what a leader is, is having an approach to working with other people, specifically those in your team. Um, and this is my philosophy. It's kind of tied to my, my cultural background, to my experiences, and it may not align with what you do within your school or your needs for a process improvement, but I, I very much believe in the culture of we. So when I, talk to, when I talk to parents or I talk to groups of teachers or even talk to individual people, I don't say that I'm developing this program or I made sure that the budget worked out in this particular way or I know that tablets are the future. I always say we, and that we, just by, by calling out we, you realize that you are part of a team pushing towards a common goal, and that's what leadership is, right? Um, we have a term at the ISTE board where, um, where I am the chair of the board. That doesn't mean I'm in charge of anything. I am just the first amongst equals. So we're all equals working towards a common goal. I'm just the first amongst them. And that, that's the culture that I try and promote at our school because educational technology, again, has to fit into everything. 
it has to fit into the operations and the educational pieces. And so if people are going to put up roadblocks because they don't feel like they're owners of that vision or of what needs to happen for the school because they're not part of the team, you're not going to find success. And people do rise to challenges and engage in their passions and kind of help push forward agenda when they feel ownership of it. So I do try and create this culture of we. And I do it not only by saying the word we, but when I, have, when I give presentations or I talk to people, it's always a dialogue. There's always a dialogue where I take my expertise, quote unquote, and my presence, and I use that in communication with somebody. So if a parent comes and has a very tough question in a, in a full-blown audience, I don't shy away from it. I don't challenge the, te- the, the parent or the teacher. You engage in a discussion. You identify if you may have faults. You, you tell them your opinions. And you have a level of transparency that shows them why you have gotten to the particular place that you've gotten to. And as you've been working in the field and you understand what educational technology can really do, you're able to field those questions. You're able to create that dialogue that brings people together into this culture of we. Um, And as we do that, and as I do create this culture of we, um, I take that approach even stronger to the teams in which I lead. So, you know, I might lead a, a library team or an educational technology coaching team or an IT team, or you know, even being part of a senior leadership team, I find a strong commitment out of my work to have growth and autonomy out of those people. So the people are part of a team, right? They're part of us working together, and there's collaboration, and there is discussion, and no question is, is a bad question. Um, doors are always open, and I have a transparent approach that allows people to, to come and talk to me, but then I also encourage growth from them. I bat things back to them when they ask me particular questions like, no, this is something that you need to answer and you need to solve because this is your area. This is something you need to own. So this might be a decision for you to make. And they already have the frame of understanding where we're going forward from my, from my articulation, from my leadership position. As those people grow, as your team grows and expands, they develop the, the ability for their own internal leadership that, that pays off dividends within the educational technology environment because you're going to see these pockets of excellence come up in such a way where they're not siloed. People feel confident and supported to do what they're doing, and they know that they can communicate with you to integrate into the entire whole. I've seen it work in so many different spaces and locations. It, it takes a little bit of work to understand how to best support people for their own growth, but that's part of your leadership because you you're, you're are so extended across a school or a district, you have to have competency, confidence, um, and ability out of, your, out of your people in order for things to go smoothly and for, um, for your ed tech programs to truly have the impact that, that potential offers. So make sure you grow your team. Um, as a couple of points just to help you grow within a leadership capacity, one of the things that I would suggest that most people do within an ed tech field, um, beyond kind of going through all the tenets that I'm talking about here and understanding where your management strengths or weaknesses may be or your your understanding of what educational technology potential really is, um, is to create um, a list of strengths that you have. What are the things that you can really draw upon? We, We have this very sad approach in education where we focus very much on weakness. Students not doing very well in math, okay, we're going to do additional things for that student in math. Um, One of my employees is not uh, meeting uh, a timeline over here, well, then there must be a deficiency within that employee. Within a leadership frame in, in educational technology, the school is going to draw the most out of you by looking at your strengths. And as you identify and grow your strengths, you are going to benefit yourself, your teams immensely. And what ends up happening is, I'm, I, is that that the organization finds that they have this, this huge diamond in the rough that they can draw upon for all sorts of things. That they can connect the various pieces together. They can put a level of confidence in you and focus on other things that they want to do because you have a better understanding of what you're good at. Um, there's a great tool out there called Strength Finder by the Gallup Group. So they do the Gallup polls. Um, I recommend going and doing that. Go through the Strength Finder, find out where your abilities are, and then potentially do a similar um, exercise with your peers on your senior leadership teams or on your educational technology leadership teams and with your, your reporting team. Find out where your strengths are and how you best work collaboratively because it offers a great level of growth 
that you can lead. You can show that we're looking to do good things with the, the tools that we have at hand, which is really what we're like looking to do with the kids. And then when people start asking you about what do you do around your weaknesses, you say that's what our team is for. We are supportive, we are collaborative, and as we identify and see more of those weaknesses, people are there to help. People are there to support one another and ensure that those things move forward. Um, it's when you focus on weakness, you're always playing catch up, right? Because as soon as I fix that, then I got something else to fix. But we're not looking to do that. We're looking to push things forward. And that's what a leader does. Takes the things that we're good at, makes sure that, that we're moving in one direction and the team can account for any problems that we're going to have along the way. Um, and then the last thing I would, I would say to you um, is that there is some value in coming up with a philosophy of your leadership. You know, you're going to read books, you're going to watch videos, you're going to see the TED Talks or whatever you do, and, the, and there are going to be things that you're going to try, they may fail, um, whatever it is, have a philosophy. As you would as a teacher, you know, we have a philosophy of education. Develop a philosophy of leadership and maybe write it down. Come up with, a, again, maybe an elevator pitch of 20 seconds or a two-minute pitch about what is your approach to leadership. Mine is around strength development. Um, engaging in potential around technology and education, identifying that potential and pushing forward, consistent improvement and growth of my teams. Those are, those are my big things when it comes to leadership. And that's how I approach leadership within my organizations. So kind of vision strategy, continuing growth, and drawing upon what we do best. Um, I guess I, there is one more thing, and that is, as with all of these areas, and as I, I even put it in as a, a tenant later on around professional learner, leadership is something that is always that, that you need to continue to develop, whether through through situational experience as you're getting within your school, or within other approaches of doing formalized courses, taking on additional tasks within your school. Um, I have found a lot of success in finding a mentor. Um, and in fact, if that's something that you're interested in, I can potentially help you talk to other people within the educational technology field and we can put you together because there are people that have had experiences within educational technology leadership and situa handling situations or crises or crises or um, I don't know, whatever that are of value for you to talk about and spitball and, and kind of chat about. And that's where I have found, I have found a lot of growth for myself. I've been turned on to books. I've been turned on to approaches. I've been able to take a step back from my, my setting in which I'm so ingrained and say, what's really going on here and how do I improve in the future? Um, so make a commitment to learning um, and maybe find somebody you can chat with in and outside of school or in or outside of school as it is. Okay, so that's the leadership one. Um, there are other elements in this series that I will be talking ar about around management, educational technology, informational technology, um, systemic thinking, and uh, being a professional learner. So please watch those other videos, connect them all together, ask questions, um, and take the jump. Become an educational technology leader. Thanks a lot.